season. And thank you for your continued support of Sarasota Audubon. Uh, we couldn't function without you. And we're all hoping for a much better year next year in every way. Let's hope we can be COVID free or at least minimize COVID and um, look forward to great things next year. So have a wonderful Christmas and holiday season. And I'm gonna turn it over to Margie and she's gonna introduce our fabulous speakers for the night. Away you go, Margie. Good evening, everybody. I'm thrilled to introduce our speakers who will talk about ambition, naivete, and insanity, a Florida big year. In 2020, Tallahassee-based naturalists and birders, Natasha Fontaine and Robert Gundy worked together to break the Florida big year record set at 387, 387 species just the year before. So Natasha Fontaine is originally from New York, my home state, and now a bio graduate at uh, Florida State University. I think you just got your MA, right? Your MS in biology. So maybe you're not, you're finished as a graduate student. Yes, is officially. This is the first presentation I'm doing not as a graduate student. <laughs> Congratulations. <Right>. Yep. <laughs> Her current research focuses on understanding habitat associations between plants and birds. A Prior to relocating to Tallahassee, she worked at the New York Botanical Garden while studying northern mockingbirds at the Lady Fat Lab at uh, Cooney Queens College and volunteered with a New York City Audubon as well as the Delaware Highlands Conservancy. In 2017, she had the amazing opportunity to attend the Cornell Lab of Ornithology sound recording workshop and since then when out birding makes recording bird calls and songs a priority as of now she has only uh, over 550 audio recordings she's also a natural science illustrator and i really love her work you should look at it on facebook and time permitting volunteers at as a shorebird steward for audubon florida I don't think you're doing very much, Natasha. No, <laughs> that's, just, that's just not enough. <laughs> and then Robert Gundy, who prefers to go by his last name, Gundy, has been with the Florida Natural Areas Inventory, the FNAI in Tallahassee since 2016. He's worked across the country as a field technician with reptiles and birds, and currently works as a herpetological works on herpetological surveys, including drift fence arrays and gopher tortoise surveys. A Florida native, he graduated from Florida State University in 2010 with a bachelor's in biology. So now let's hear about their big year and what records did they break with what number of species? <laughs> and how much trouble we got into. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Can you see our screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. So, hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, I guess you can take maybe about 10 seconds to kind of read some of the little bubbles um, here on this slide. <laughs> Just a little sarcasm. Um, <laughs> okay. Oops. All right. So we're going to start with the first winter, January through February. So this is our happy new year, our first year of the bird. Um, I mean, first bird of the year <laughs> was a black crowned night heron, and that was at 12 01 a.m. Um, so at this time, we were in the Everglades and we were not. We were not big year birding at all. We were not even thinking about a big year. We were camping, we were getting bitten by mosquitoes and we were birding. <laughs> so um, this was our first uh, bird of the year. And after the first day we had 61 species. So, you know, we were just, just outside doing what we normally do. And uh, before we know it, 
We're at 100 species in a few days, and it's an American robin. And after the big year, we learned that you can't take your common birds for granted, and you should document them because we don't have a photo of an American robin from the year. Yep. For the entire year, we apparently, between the two of us, <laughs> never took a photo of an American robin. It's one of the very few species we don't have evidence for. Okay, so once upon a time on an airboat. So as um, in during the introduction, uh, you heard that Gandhi, he's um, does a lot of work around the state. And this uh, project in particular, he uh, invited me to come on an airboat at Payne's Prairie. He was doing a survey out there for uh, snail kites and invasive uh, plants. And so I was like, sure, I've never been on an airboat. Of course I'm coming. <laughs> so um, went out in an airboat and you know, he's working, I'm relaxing um, <laughs> and just enjoying. And so we're going around Paints Prairie to an area that is not open to the public. Um, and as it's, it was almost as if we went around this bend and when we went around this turn, there was like this open water. And it was almost like we, we, ran into a tornado of snow kites. There were so many of them. They were all flying around and foraging, hunting, calling back and forth. It was really, really amazing. And literally they were right above the airboat. It was, it was just a fantastic, um, amazing opportunity. And I have a recording um, of it and I, this was the first time I heard a snail kite and yeah, me too. I, it was like, what? That's the sound that's coming out of, <laughs> it, out of this bird. So here we go. I'm going to play it. So if you don't have your volume up, turn it up. And that is a snail kite. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for a good bit of the first winter, what we were doing was chasing around tropical rarities, especially in South Florida. Uh, we started in the Everglades because we wanted to pick up uh, some of the rarities that show up there every year, like the brown pestle flycatcher on the left, and we heard about the Lasagras flycatcher there in the middle. Um, and then we, uh, a couple months into it, made a run down to the Keys overnight to go see that thick-billed vireo on the right. Um, all three of those are Caribbean slash the brown crested also gets into Latin America. Um, and yeah, that, that's uh, kind of how the beginning it, it all started. And that was kind of the trend for most of the winter. Well, we weren't actually big year birding yet. We still yeah, not yet. have it, well, kind of thick we well, were. Thick we were but like those, yeah, the other yeah. two, the left and middle birds, the brown crested flycatcher and the Lasagras flycatcher. We were not. We weren't big year birding yet. That was, those were actually the first day of the year. Yeah. Um, and then uh, other things we were chasing during the winter were varieties from out west. And 2020 was a phenomenal year for birds coming from out west. We actually talked to some other people uh, last weekend that said, what, what happened to all the western birds yeah. uh, for this year? Uh, the Hammond's flycatcher was at Corkscrew Swamp Sanctuary. I got that on my shirt. I got that on my shirt. Um, <laughs> and that was a really rare bird. I think it was a second or third state record, something very low like that. And all the way at the very top of the photo on the right, on top of the building, is a human's goal that was watching <laughs> us have lunch and live with beer. Uh, so we went and chased that. Um, that's actually where I, I grew up fishing on Lake Rift Pier. So it was really get, cool to get to go to a place I knew really well from growing up and then have this life bird from California out there. And so here, once again, we still, well, we're not, we're big year birding yet? Or oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely big year birding yet. Because um, like I said, we did not start the year off big year birding. We actually had a goal of like, all right, well, we're doing well. Maybe let's try for 300. <laughs> but we were definitely not big year birding. Um, but at this time, we were. Um, so we got the Rufus Hummingbird and Black Shin Hummingbird in someone's backyard. Um, this nice fellow, he had a bunch of bird feeders up and every year it seems like he's getting this bird and it was really great because as soon as we pulled up he comes out the house you know really nice guy and next thing you know boom we got the birds really quick so that was nice and easy um the brilliant flycatcher we have here um from up here in um, Tallahassee at uh, St. Mark's um, National Wildlife Refuge 
Um, and we were very fortunate to get this vermilion flycatcher because that last year was actually the last year that it was seen. We have one now, but it's not this one. Um, so we got really lucky to get this beautiful bird. And some other northern birds that were rarities so at the beginning of the year. Um, we're getting just barely into, into spring almost here. There was a national rubble reported at some of these yard in Tallahassee. So we went wandering around the neighborhood with binoculars hoping to figure out who had bird feeders. <laughs> and we were not at first successful, but then a couple walking their dog asked us if we knew what a natural was. <laughs> really? <Yes. laughs> and they invited us in the yard and boom, there it was. Yep. Um, and then we, uh, one of the first birds we chased at this um, place called Okaloosa Holding Ponds, which turned out to hold all sorts of cool rare birds throughout the year, uh, was this black-headed gull. And that was the only one I think that got reported in the state that year. And this snow goose at Mayaka River State Park, right down the street from everybody there in Sarasota. Yep. Um, that, was, that was a cool bird. That was also a nice close range duck because most of the time ducks are pretty far. Yeah. And then so now on January 26, um, our 200th species was the Western Sandpiper at Honeymoon Island State Park. All right, moving on to spring migration. So these are some really favorite, uh, our favorite migrant traps. Um, you know, St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge is great. Uh, Ballpoint State Park is fantastic. That is, that is my favorite. It's been <laughs> my running favorite uh, for a little while now um, because the birds are just so, they're so close and they're so easy there. And there's this little corner that right before you get into Ballpoint State Park that for some reason, it's like this hot spot. It was, um, we found it by accident and it's just so productive. Um, yeah. yeah, we found it because COVID wouldn't let us in the park. So yeah, actually. We just burned it outside the park. Yeah, what we yeah. Did. and it turned out to be really great. Um, Okaloosa Veteran Park is another one of my favorites um, just because it's just so small. And you'll see with the following slides how many fantastic warblers that show up there and easy as well. You don't have to walk out of there with warbler neck. You're fine. <laughs> Your neck <laughs> is fine after leaving that park. <laughs> You can go to Fort DeSoto. Uh, yeah, Fort DeSoto in Tampa, that's a fantastic spot. It's got a little bit of everything with shorebirds and uh, songbirds. Uh, St. George Island, a couple hours from here, that's another fantastic spot where birds just drop out of the sky during migration. <laughs> um, Eleanor Clap Phipps Park is a local city park here in Tallahassee um, that just gets fantastic birds during migration. Really good for thrushes. You can get five species of thrushes there sometimes. And Leffis Key down in, I think that's Manatee County, right above you uh, in Sarasota. That was a new spot for both of us. And the sea grapes along the public beach there were really awesome. <laughs> they had all sorts of cool birds that we didn't even know birds would use sea grape. But yeah. We, we saw probably 15, 20 species of warblers. Yep. So here are some warblers we, we got at Okaloosa Veterans Park. We got black coated green warbler, bay breasted warbler, cerulean warbler, which was a nice, um, we were a nice, un, very unexpected, really yeah. nice show, showed up really nice. Um, worm eating warbler, which is one of my favorites because they're so cute. Golden wing warbler, and actually this prothonotary warbler we got at um, Otter Lake, which is uh, part of St. Mark's, um, but I don't know, how would you call that? Like, it's just like a subset? Yeah, it's a different yeah, track. It's like it's a different separate track. from the whole main part that everybody knows. Yeah. Oh, and this is a Kentucky Warbler that we ended up getting at Clap Phipps. And um, this was really a cool experience because we heard that it was reported there. And, you know, Clap Phipps is, Clap Phipps is uh, pretty thick. The forest is pretty thick. Um, nice trails but it is dense. And so we were kind of concerned like, oh, well, I don't know if we're gonna get a good shot and, you know, or recording or anything, but, you know, we got there within like five minutes of walking on the trail, we hear it in the background and we we're like, oh, there it is, go, go, go. So, <laughs> so we started, you know, making our way and it just popped up right in front of us, nice and showy and it got a really good recording. Uh, some other cool birds that we got during spring migration was Philadelphia, Philadelphia Vireo. That was actually a nemesis bird for me that had escaped me for several years of chasing them around uh, North Florida. 
and uh, Scarlet Tanager, that's another Okaloosa Veterans Park special. Um, go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then Bank Swallow, that was at the Okaloosa Holding Ponds. Again, that, that, these holding ponds are just amazing. They pull in all sorts of cool rare birds. And the bobo link there, we saw a whole group of bobo links at uh, Sweetwater Wetlands uh, down in Gainer. Yeah, down in Gainesville, down for us. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Connecticut warbler was really cool. Yeah. Uh, so in one week, we got five Connecticut warblers, and neither of us have ever seen one before. Yeah. <laughs> the first one was, or the first two, I think it was, were at Lido Key. Mm -hmm. And then there was another one somewhere nearby in Sarasota that we got at another spot. I don't remember the name of that spot. Um, oh, Lefisky. That is, um, I think it was at Lefisky actually. And then we also got one in Palm Beach County uh, where we met Richard Crosley, which was really cool. Was cool. Um, <laughs> and we saw one up in the Panhandle all in one week. It was wild. And then that Magnolia World, as you can see in the sea breaks there, mm -hmm. who knew? Who knew birds would hang out at the beach as much as people? Yep, that was a nice surprise. Um, so we had the yellow-throated, uh, yellow-throated vireo. That was Okaloosa as well. No, that was... I don't remember where that photo's from. I don't from, remember but, where that's from. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> too many birds. Too many birds. <laughs> and um, yeah, so last year for me, especially because I'm not from Florida, was a blur. Like, I, I, we've been in every single county pretty much. Except we've for at me. least driven through every single yeah, county. At least driven yeah. through every single county. Yeah. And to me, it's like this big blur of Florida. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, back to the slide. Swainson's and Great Cheek Thrush. Um, so this day, I actually didn't go out with um, him because I had to stay home and, and work. And he was able to get time off. So I was home working and um, he got this fantastic um, photo. I really like this photo because it's when do you ever get a chance to see a Swainson's and a Great Cheek Thrush side by side like that? I just thought that that was fantastic. And that was here locally too. Yep, yeah, well, Color Springs State Park is where that yep. was at. That was a fantastic morning. Yeah, yeah, he called me like, oh, it's too bad you can't come. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think I saw about 100 individual thrushes that morning. Yeah. Just astounding. Normally. Amazing. A, a five individual thrush day is usually a good day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, going back to thrushes. Um, so on April 20th, we hit number 300, the big 300 of Viri. And for me in particular, this is a special bird uh, because growing up, um, I grew up in a city, but we used to go camping in the Catskills. And so while we were camping, you know, I would hear this song from the woods and it's this, you know, I'm, I hope everyone has heard of Viri before. If you haven't, you should look it up um, on Macaulay Library. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the song is just this mystical sound. And so like as a kid, it was just, I would never see this bird. And I, you know, as a kid, I honestly wasn't even sure it was a bird, but I just heard this musical um, sounds coming from the forest and that was, you know, fantastic. So for me, um, getting it at number 300 was really special. Okay, summertime and birding is easy. Um, so talking about special places, dry tortugas is fantastic. If you have not gone, you have to yeah, go. Yeah. Um, you have to go because it's amazing. And so for me in particular, um, once again, growing up, you know, I used to watch a lot of nature uh, programs on PBS and I used to watch these birds like the mass booby and brown booby and um, magnificent uh, frigate bird. And you know, at that time, I never thought that I would see any of these birds. I was basically, to me, they were just TV birds. And so going to dry tortugas and seeing these birds in their habitat, in their, you know, yeah, in their habitat, it was just like, I'm seeing my TV birds right now. So it was really, really super. Um, Sooty Turn and a Brown Naughty, all TV birds to me. <laughs> I never thought that I would ever see them. Um, and this photo is fantastic too. Um, yeah, this, so on the left here, we have a black knotty, which- Chocolate knotty. Yeah, <laughs> which is just a little bit uh, smaller and darker than the brown knotty. Mm -hmm. What we notice in person is they're not only black, they're like dark chocolate, like bitter dark chocolate, like 85%. Yeah. And, and brown knotty is more like- milk like chocolate. Your, yeah, it's a milk chocolate, semi sweet chocolate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, dry tortugas is the only place in the continental U.S. to usually get to see a black knotty. And we got really lucky that um, they had just opened up dry tortugas yeah. again because of COVID. 
We had a friend go the weekend before. He didn't get the, the black naughty. And then when we got there, we didn't all see it at first. And then a few minutes later, somebody goes, hey, look, it just flew right in front of you. <laughs> and <laughs> that's the photo. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we got really lucky because COVID shut everything down. And that was one of our challenges of getting on a pelagic and getting, you know, where getting into parks and getting into everywhere because everything was shut down. So that was a real challenge. So we got really lucky with this. Oh, so this was cool. Yeah, this is a um, So while we're walking around, out, we had split up and gone very on different sides of the island, which is not a big place. Um, <laughs> and I'm walking around and I see one of the other birders that's on our trip. He's on top of the fort at, um, at Dry Tortugas. And I yelled to him, I was like, hey, you see anything cool from up there that I can't see down here? Thinking of like far off seabirds. And he says, oh yeah, there's a short-eared owl on the ground down here. <laughs> Oh, okay, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and I kept walking. And then I kind of thought to myself, I was like, you know, you better ask to make sure that's actually a joke. Uh, <laughs> and so I was like, Adam, you're joking about the shorty owl, right? He goes, no, it's really down here on the ground inside the fort. You gotta come see it. <laughs> yeah. So there it is, sitting yeah. on the ground, yeah. just underneath some cabbage foam. And just looking cute. <laughs> okay. And this is another really cool bird for us, the glaucus ball. Neither of us has seen one of these before. Um, this is at Huguenot Memorial Park in Jacksonville. And it was right on the beach, super easy to see. And it was all by itself at first. So we just kept our distance and you know took our photos from afar. All we needed was documentation. And then it just walked right up to us. Just, yeah. Just moseyed on right up to us. And, you know, guys, we had to walk back to get our cameras to focus. Um, and this is one of the cool photos. And you can see that those wing feathers are all really uh, shaggy and worn. And we think that's why that bird was there in May is because that's a first year bird and it, its feathers were too messed up to yeah. fly home at that point. Yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> So this was a fun story. Um, so we have uh, the South Polar Skua. And um, so this bird was reported in Alabama. And we, you know, we were only doing Florida. But we decided that would be a life of both of us. And we're like, all right, it's just over the border. Let's just go drive over there. And, you know, we'll have a nice lifer and then just like have the day or whatever. So, um, so we did that. We went over to Alabama. First time I've ever been in Alabama and um no bird we don't that it's not there we're looking looking it's not there so we get back in the car like all right well let's go back and then gundy says well you know what when we get over to florida let's make the first stop that we can on the beach right so i'm like okay let's go whatever and so we make um what's that place called again the perdido, perdido key, perdido key exactly. State Park. yeah so we went to perdido key and so, you know, we're like, all right, let's just make it a kind of beach day, you know, since we're always on the run. It was like, let's just take this moment, right? So we put our, our gear down on the beach. We get in the water. We're just like hanging out and stuff and feeling a little bit deflated. I will not lie. <laughs> okay, because we kind of wanted that bird. <laughs> um, but we, you know, turn around and we're starting to make our way out the water. And he turns around and... <laughs> is a little bit like dumbstruck like, like what, what is that and i look up and i'm like what is that and next thing you know it's just this huge bird that flies over us and we're both like that's the bird <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um of course right there we don't have a camera we don't have anything on us because it's on the shore we run out of the water grab the scope grab the cameras this that whatever he starts booking it, okay? <laughs> and you guys go yeah, so first. <laughs> we start running down the beach. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine we're in bathing suits, mm -hmm. but we have a camera and a tripod. <laughs> and we're running down the beach. Moms are literally moving Why? their children <laughs> out of our way to get out of the way of the two crazy people coming running down the beach. Yep. And so we go chase the bird. And I look back, and Natasha's just slowly walking down the beach. You're like, what are you doing? Come get the bird! Yeah, he has no clue that I just fell and like busted my ankle. And I'm like, just keep going! Keep going! I see it! And so I get over to where the bird is and it flies into the water and it just sits in the water um, just off the shore. So I wandered in, you can see at the top left to about just deep. 
to get closer photos of it. And as I'm taking photos of it, it flies right by me, which is the picture on the right. That photo was completely uncropped. That is actually how close the bird got yep. to me. Yeah, so that was that was a lot of fun and um, oops, and a really happy moment because you know, like we said, we were just we went to Alabama just to have a life where we never thought that it was like okay, we're gonna get it for the big year. That was not even like on our radar at all. Oh, this is on too. Uh, so we were in Lucky Hammock down right outside Everglades National Park. And this place truly is lucky. If you're ever down in South Florida, you have to go birding there, especially if it's yeah, in the winter. Yeah, they have a casings right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> casings kingbird Cassins, yeah. and tropical uh, kingbird are there. Yep. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's lucky. It's lucky. Flycatcher <laughs> <Hammond. Right. laughs> So we were actually there for a flycatcher. In September, we were looking for a willow flycatcher. Uh, we didn't get that, but while we were birding for it, we heard this sound. And I immediately knew what it was because I had seen them in Bolivia before. I was like, that's an Ani. Oh my gosh, you have to record, you have to record. And so <laughs> I, you know, we get her recording equipment out and she starts recording. And then, you know, we walk a little farther because we know the bird is like just around this bend here, but we didn't want to disturb it before we had our proof. And so we walk around the bend and boom, there's this Ani. And it pretty much lets us walk right up to it, yeah. watch it for a few minutes. Yeah. And then it disappeared and it was never seen again. Never seen it was again. a one hour wonder. Yep. Okay. Uh, so for those who don't know, um, for a big year, there are a list, there's a list of established birds um, or birds that count according to the American Birding Association. And some of those are exotic birds whose populations have become established by their definition. And so we had, like 15 or so-ish exotic birds that, that counted towards our big year. Um, scaly breasted mutia up on the left, we uh, first got in Pensacola, got in Miami again later. Mm -hmm. uh, the red whisker bubble down in the bottom was in Miami and spot breasted oriole was another spot in Miami. And uh, those red whiskered bubbles, man, those are actually, really, those are pretty cool birds. Yeah, they're really cool. Most of the time I kind of scoff at the exotics, but that was a really cool one. Yeah. All right, now we're into fall migration. So fall migration, it's September. And so we had a friend tell us that around 300, things are gonna get hard. And, you know, we kind of laughed at that. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, we got this in the bag. We're doing so well. We're just like so pumped. And just every weekend we're getting birds every single weekend. And we're like 300, things get difficult. No way, we're like speeding through this, right? Um, and then September came <laughs> um, and schedules changed and we were tired and the weekends and I mean, we basically spent our Friday nights um, right after work, food shopping, food prepping, getting in the car and driving. And then that was like every single weekend. So we were like, we were, def we were deflated basically. And it was to the point that we weren't sure if we were going to continue. So we had to really figure out like, do we stop now and just do what we have, what we did and call it a day, or do we keep going? And basically, you know, it was the birding community that kind of pushed us along to keep going the last three months um, and um, well, three, four months. And at that time, and that was really what kept us going was everyone was like, no, just keep trying, you know, keep pushing, you're doing so well. And then so in a nutshell, um, this bird kind of helped us push as well. We were home, of course, it was COVID, we were working from home and I was taking a nap, which is a very rare thing because I don't actually even sleep sometimes. <laughs> so, um, and he had the window open and we hear the call. I was half asleep. And I kind of turned around like, was that? And he was already looking at me like, uh, yes, it was. And so we got up and got the recorder out. And here we go. We got a golden crown kinglet. Um, you have to listen hard. This is really, really high pitched and low. Okay. 
Back to fly catchers. <laughs> yeah, so fall brings a whole new suite of fly catchers for us. Uh, we got Alder fly catcher on my birthday, a lucky hammock down near the Everglades. And we tried five or six times in different parts of the state to get olive sided fly catcher. And we'd given up hope by the time November came around because most people said that they would come around in August and, uh, or September and October. And like mid or late November, one of them shows up just a couple hours from here at Eglin Air Force yes. Base. And you know, it got reported soon enough that we got wind of it same day. Um, and we drove over there and so we get there, there's two other birders there. And uh, we, we jump out of the car and we're like, hey, is the offset of flight catcher here? They said, no, it just flew off. It'll probably be back in a couple of minutes. It's just been kind of moving around a little bit. Okay, well, I had just had an entire Gatorade on the way there and that Gatorade needed to make its way out of me. <laughs> and so I went and took care of myself in the bushes there. And sure enough, as I'm you know, doing nature's deed, like here's the fly catcher, it's over here. Like, oh, I can't do anything about it right now. <laughs> it's going to have to sit there and wait. <laughs> and luckily, it waited for me, but it didn't wait much longer. About five or ten minutes later, um, that bird was gone for yeah. the rest of the day, and it started raining. Yeah. And then the uh, Cuban peewee was a, a, another big overnight run to, uh, to the Keys. And we we actually camped on the side of a residential road in the middle of the Keys <laughs> in our tent yep. and woke up to find the Cuban peewee. Oh, and just uh, if you're curious, um, we didn't stay in any hotels or anything like that. We camped and car camps the entire year. I think we stayed twice with yeah. two friends and that's it. Yeah. But other than that, we were camping um, either in a tent or in the car the whole time. No hotels at all. Yeah. Okay, so a few randoms. We have a blue-winged warbler, which uh, we almost missed that one for the year. And that was kind of a poor choice. Um, so if you're thinking about doing a big year, don't take for granted that these things are being reported every weekend. <laughs> blue wing Wobbler almost escaped us, which would have been really bad. Um, so we have Wilson's Warbler in Spanish River Park and a red-legged brush, which was an overnight drive. Um, but then we come to find out it stayed for how much longer? <laughs> yeah, it was in, well into 2021, like into March or something. Yeah, so uh, overnight drive, um, and we got it. <laughs> um, so yeah, back to overnight driving. Um, <laughs> so this was one of the rare weekends that um, we were actually home on a Friday. No, Saturday night. Was it Friday night? Oh, it's yeah, Saturday, it was Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night. night. We were actually home. We didn't drive to the Keys this weekend. We were just birding locally and there was nothing really to chase. So we were actually watching a movie. Um, <laughs> and next thing you know, we get this text message like, hey, where are you? We're leaving at 6 a.m. What? This is at 7 p.m. we get this text. 7 p.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> and this text is coming from Miami. <laughs> okay, so we had to go um, because like I mentioned earlier, because of COVID, there were no pelagics. We were not able to get on any boats except for that dry to this one. So we had to go. So reluctantly, we got up, packed the car and drove down. We made it there for 6 a.m. leaving, got on a boat and everything was fine. We were on the boat. I have never really been out to sea on a small boat like that before, but I thought everything was fine. <laughs> and next thing you know, um, I'm vomiting. <laughs> it's not stopping. <laughs> but I know that we need to see the bird together. So I'm between vomiting, I'm like binos and vomit. <laughs> binos and vomit. <laughs> and um, they get wind of long tail Jaeger. Yep. And I'm already like, I am exhausted because I have been puking like not like pretty much nonstop at this point. And um, the long tail Jaeger, I'm like, I need to see this bird. They see it in the distance. Then they lose it. Then there's a chase. It's like, it's like a boat chase now. How many, how fast are we going? Uh, I think you said we were doing 20 knots in five to seven foot seats. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. 
crazy and I'm still puking. All right. <laughs> so they're looking off in the distance, right? And I'm now I'm at the point that I'm kind of passing out, like not passing out, like I'm on the floor, but I'm dozing. I'm starting to sleep a little bit in between the vomiting. And I just so happen to like look up at the right time. And there is a long tail Jaeger about, I don't know, 20 feet from the boat, something like <laughs> something that. Really it was close. something really close. And they were looking all to the, like in the yep. front. We and were I, chasing one a hundred yards off the yep. side of the boat. And I just looked up and all I said was like, it's right there. <laughs> and then I just like, good, I still have goodbye. <laughs> And I snapped that photo on yep. the upper right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. Just like it says on the bottom left hand, don't forget the drum of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second winter, the end of the year. Uh, so, um, I don't remember how we found out about this. Probably Facebook. But apparently the way the story goes is somebody reported a strange gull eating their fishing bait who was a birder and didn't recognize the goal, sent some photos off. I think this is a story, I, I could be wrong, it's been a year now. Um, and a savings goal is at a uh, fishing pier, literally eating fishermen's bait off their hooks and off the, the cleaning table. And so we went to go see it, it, you know, it stuck around for a couple of days. So like, yes, okay, it's stuck. Cause most savings goal sightings are just flybys in Florida. And so it stuck around, so we went and got it. And yeah, it, it was just like any laughing goal at the beach, just flying right over us, dropping onto the jetty, steal it, the upper right picture there, it was, that's the bait station at the pier. It's just dropping in where people are and taking their bait from them as they're cutting it. Um, it was amazing. And then we started to hear it calling, which we didn't even realize as well was happening at first. And so then Natasha had to go run back to the car to get the recorder. <laughs> And we heard it calling because it was flying like literally right over us. So that was really nice. And that's the short recording I got of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's only like one of four recordings that have ever been taken in Florida for that species. Yep. So. Oh yes, okay. Yep. So we call this our great race to nowhere. Um, we went nowhere. <laughs> We, uh, so this is mid-December or so, late December, third week of December, I think, and we've, we're chasing birds going south, and there's a report of a common eider in Key West, and that is the southernmost record of common eider anywhere in the world. So we go down there, and it's been seen all around the island over the course of a few days. So we go to the spot it's last seen. We don't find it. We go to all the spots it's been seen before. We don't find it. We try a couple new spots um and we never see the bird and so we've decided we'll probably give it up but natasha says well why don't we try the first spot one more time we still have a little sunlight left you yeah, know all right fine um you know what do we have to do sleep <laughs> uh so we we go there and sure enough she spots it right as it goes down and it doesn't pop up for a while and so we think oh no it's gone around the, the side where there's this big seawall uh, protecting a, a resort that's blocking our view. Well, we have now the kayaks on us. So we drop the kayaks in the water at this bar dock thing. It has like um, tiki's or whatever. Yeah, like, they, yeah, it's like tiki huts. Yeah. You know, they, they made a fake beach with tiki huts for people to drink at. And we decided we're going to throw our kayaks in there. And it somehow has gotten choppy for the first time ever in Key West. <laughs> and... We are paddling as hard as we can against the wind and into the chop, and we make it 30 yards at best, at best, <laughs> from our dock, and it just pops up right in front of us suddenly. And so that's the picture that you see on the right, is when it pops up on us when we're in the kayaks. And so we paddle as fast as we can back to shore, put our kayaks back on the car, because we're not even sure we were allowed at the time to, to put our kayaks in there, but nobody was around. And so we got the car all put away. Oh, what was the guy? And, oh, yeah. And <laughs> this guy asked, him, we're in such a rush. And we're like shouting commands at each other. This guy's like, are you on a time trial? Or something? <laughs> well, uh, well so uh, we're looking at so many, for as many birds in one year as possible. It's kind of a time trial. Uh, <laughs> and as we're putting the kayak away, 
it just swims underneath the dock right that we were there. standing on that we launched the kayak from. Yep. And so we just walked, I walked down the dock, took, some, took the picture on the left. Yep. Um, nice and easy, nice and dry, no yep. risk to our equipment or safety. Yep. <laughs> so basically we did not have to do a pretend time trial. We did not need to jump in the kayaks and like two crazy people. Um, if we would have just sat there and waited, the bird would have just showed right up. Yep. <laughs> so if you're planning on doing a big year, have some patience. <laughs> um, okay, so long builds curlew at Cedar Key. Uh, this was really, um, really nice. We ended up seeing two long billed curlews, which, which is really cool. Um, we ended up renting a pontoon. Um, I have never been on a pontoon before. Um, and so he was driving and, you know, just like in uh, Paynes Prairie, I was like chilling out. Um, <laughs> and so... I so we set up the try um the uh, stove and everything and you know he's driving around and we're going to like you know far out point and I'm looking through the scope and next thing you know I see like this large lump larger than all the other birds and I'm like I think I see them <laughs> so we're like go that way and next thing you know we've got two of them yep. and um, it was really nice and really peaceful. There was no one on the water. This was definitely one of our nicer birding moments yeah. in the sense that it was relaxing. The bird was right there. There were two of them. And we we were able to watch them forage with oyster catchers and ready turnstones. Um, and and, and, and wimbrels too. That's right. We had wimbrels there as well. And they were bathing. And it, I mean, it was just really like a beautiful moment to be able to observe them and observe their behavior. Um, and then we went fishing and I, I caught my first flounder with a piece of kielbasa, which is like, yay. Um, and we got to watch the beautiful sunset. We had um, dolphins next to us. Yeah, we had stuff. dolphins yeah. next to us. They were like racing the pontoon. It was really, it was, that was definitely one of the nicer um, <laughs> days we had without sweating, without mosquitoes, without yeah, no seals. Yeah, we're yeah, not sitting on the side of the road. <laughs> like, it wasn't that nice. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, so the, the year ended with mangrove cuckoo. So we <laughs> spent 364 days without getting a bird that lives here, 365 days in the state of Florida. Um, this is actually the bird we tried for most often over any other species. We tried at least 14 different times to get mangrove cuckoo. Uh, we tried in the Keys and in Sanibel and at Black Point Marina. And there was a one-off sighting in Sarasota at Lido Key that happened, and we did not see it any of those times. Yep. And so, while everyone's reporting, cooperative, we saw it, we got it, calling the entire day. <laughs> we had our, our nice, beautiful day with that long billed curlew. We decided, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go all the way back down to South Florida and, and try to get one of these mangrove cuckoos. And yep. Sure enough, we got one. It was as cooperative as other people have frustratingly been saying yeah. all year long um there was the worst word we could ever hear for the entire big year was the word cooperative talking yes. about bird, <laughs> because it never seemed to be when somebody else labeled it cooperative cooperative for us so nope. all right so now we're just going to go through some favorite birds and some favorite audio and some favorite photos so we're going to kind of move a little bit quicker so we can have time for questions Okay, lunchtime lifers. Yeah, so, these are his favorite. Yeah, I love the birds that are super easy, close to home. They don't take a lot of work. They don't get too exhausted. So the the first two birds there, the Scots are lesser tanager. We got those on a lunch break. That was awesome. Yep. And then the lesser nighthawk was something at St. Mark's that uh, just we got super lucky that one somebody found it that morning, and two. We were actually birding back to back, and had we both been facing the same direction, we would have missed it because I just flew right by, and that was the end of it. Yep. Um, so we have Great Shearwater and the fun South Polar Stua. So Great Shearwater is one of um, our favorites because that was um, one of our first lifers that we had. First. It was actually yeah, it was the first lifer um, that we had on our first date. Um, so that was, that's always a memorable bird for us. And the South Polo School, you heard that crazy story. So <laughs> um, Magnificent Frigate Bird is, um, as I mentioned before, one of my TV birds. So every time I see a Magnificent Frigate Bird, it's always fantastic. And the American Flamingo, which is here at St. Mark's, is our anniversary bird. So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Um, Florida Scrub Jay, that's more of her favorite, actually. Um, and yeah, we got we got to see them up close. You know, for those who have seen Florida Scrub Jays, you can often get pretty close to them. They're very inquisitive. So, uh, so that was really enjoyable. And then Red Breasted Nut Hatch, we both love those just because yeah. they're super adorable. Yep. Um, we went looking at a bunch of places for Red Breasted Nut Hatch and only found one late in December. And it was a real cutie and it called yeah. for us and it came down and looked at us and it was, it was a good moment. Least favorite birds. <laughs> Here we go. Yep, so that's me. Um, <laughs> and we are in Washington County. We were chasing a Harris' sparrow, but also we got wind on a Western meadowlark that was reported in a landfill. I was going to say a dump, but <laughs> a landfill. <laughs> um, and so, so, you know, like I was saying, the year is spent with things packed in your car. We're packing. There's always stuff in the car. We're sleeping in the car sometimes, you know. And so Gundy, he likes to clean you know, have things organized. He's more organized than I am, um, which is great. And he cleaned out the car and it looked fantastic. It was fantastic until we went for the Harris Sparrow. And I realized that my boots weren't in there. My extra pants weren't in there. My scarf wasn't there. He cleaned it out so well and didn't put any of the stuff back. <laughs> so that is why I look a hot mess right there. <laughs> um, so yeah, we ended up um, not getting the Western Meadowlark. That was really difficult and slightly annoying um, to be walking through a landfill in sandals. Um, <laughs> and the Harris Sparrow, we ended up getting it a different day not this day no. uh, but we did get it and it's very cute yeah it was in the 30s that day the yeah. important fact to consider that she's in flip-flops in the 30s with like 10 mile an hour winds yeah and normally i'm fine with the cold um but that was just over the top <laughs> okay uh, so you are famous town sims warbler yeah. in the town of osprey at that park i think it uh bayside park i think is the name i can't remember um john groskopf's little pet yeah <laughs> um, that's one of our least favorite birds because we spent two entire weekends 10 hour days searching for that townsend warbler in that very small park with very little else around to see and I didn't get it. get it um and it wasn't until it showed back up again for the magical john groskopf uh in the fall that uh, I actually had a, a couple extra days that I could use to go birding that Natasha was busy. So I went down there and I birded for several hours, couldn't find it. John shows up. He goes, oh, there it is. <laughs> sure enough, there's the bird. It shows up for a whole 45 seconds. That was it. Gone. Um, one of the times that we were birding there, we actually were standing next to people who saw the bird. Um, and we didn't, we didn't see, the bird. see it. Like that's how frustrating that bird was for us. Yeah. And how it just didn't it didn't cooperate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the greater white friend of goose would try for that three or four times in Key West and lives at a golf course, but everybody says, Oh, it's just there by the fence. That's right. Yeah, it was not there yeah. anytime we were there except the very believe. last time. Yep. Um, don't believe them. It's never by that gate. <laughs> never. And then <laughs> Go Swift, if any of you ever go chasing that at uh, University of Florida's campus, it is the most underwhelming life you'll ever have because all you do is just see a gray streak just dive bomb into a chimney and that's the moment that's all you get but they have 12 now so you might be able to see something you'll see 12 12 streaks <laughs> <laughs> okay craziest places we slept well on the beach we slept on a lot of beaches yeah. um just like Siesta Key, by the way, that's our favorite. Yep. That's our favorite beach to sleep on. Beach crashing. <laughs> um, KOA Christmas. So Christmas oh. Eve, this is the worst. K -O I've never been to a KOA. This is the first and the last that I will ever go to. It was mortifying. It, first of all, they had a cat colony. Second of all, there were shady things going on that was like, okay, is there going to be police action in here tonight? It seems like people were living there. I mean, it was terrible it was so bad that i was like let's pull the car up to the tent and like let's sleep in the tent but like right by the car and the next morning i'm a coffee drinker big time coffee drinker there was no coffee the next morning we woke up at 4 a.m i was like let's get out of here i don't have time for coffee <laughs> we have to get out of here <laughs> yeah so it's no koa do not recommend don't go there mm -mm. uh we kind of sort of slept under a bridge in the car in the keys 
um, <laughs> for my birthday, we went camping with some friends who had like a big giant 12 person tent. So we put our little tent in their tent, but they didn't put a rain fly on their tent and then it rained in the middle of the night. Yep. And all of us slept in a puddle, in a tent, in a tent. <laughs> um, and then in the Keys, when we chased that thick Vireo, uh, a couple hours before we got that Vireo, we were kindly woken up by a police officer who told us, uh, excuse me, you can't sleep here. <laughs> uh, because we were right on the side of US-1 in front of the state park waiting for, for it to open. And he, luckily he just told us where what parking lot we could go sleep in. Yeah, he was very nice. I'll yeah. give him that. But it was a little bit like, uh-oh, there are lights being flashed in this car. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, rarest birds. All right, so Hammond's flycatcher, that was a second and third state record. Mountain Bluebird was a second state record. Uh, Scott's Oil on the left, that was a first state record here in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Blackface Brass Quit, that is actually uh, Natasha's car's rear view mirror. Um, that's really how close it was. In yeah. fact, it had lunch in our car. Yep. Um, <laughs> that was down in Big Pine Key. Um, Red Legged Thrush, that was a third US record. Yeah. Cuban Peewee, I think, was the eighth or ninth uh, U.S. record. Eighth? Yeah, eighth. Um, so, and then there's a whole different category of rare birds right, that are like globally rare and actually imperiled. Um, and so whooping crane is in that um, category, very well known for, you know, having made somewhat of a comeback. Mm -hmm. um, Florida scrub jays are a very rare bird, I believe federally threatened. All right, some favorite recordings. Um, so this is one of my favorites. This was at Bottoms Road up here in Panacea, um, Seaside Sparrow. Um, this one is a uh, Willow that we got in uh, the Everglades. Uh, this was probably, I don't know, maybe at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., something yeah. like that. But he was driving, I was sleeping, um, <laughs> and I, for me, this is normal, but maybe not for normal for everyone. A lot of times I sleep with the recorder, and um, whether we're camping, in the car, whatever, if I'm, like, sleeping, I have the recorders on my lap. And he pulls over, I wake up, we hear it, I'm, like, half, like, one of my eyes open, I've got the recorder, we go out, and got this fantastic recording. Here's some royal turns. Um, there are a lot of them. This was really nice because we were able to watch them mating and um, doing their mating ritual. <laughs> He's getting ready. <laughs> the mating ritual. And um, it was just a really nice moment um, to get this kind of a quality recording. This was at this was at Huguenot. Don't make me say it. Oh, he always does this because I leave it out. Okay, so this recording and a few of my other recordings, um, they are on the Macaulay <laughs> on the Merlin app. Um, so some um, I really love recording, and so one of my priorities is to get high quality recordings. So some of them kind of show up on apps and stuff like that. <laughs> so <laughs> this is one of them. Okay, favorite photos. We'll run through these pretty quick. Yeah, because time's running out. Uh, that that female black scooter on the left is actually at the North Jetty Beach there in Sarasota. Uh, that American oyster catcher was just very kind to us and got us get really close. Mm -hmm. um, one of my only times I've ever taken a picture of a brown pelican because I'm one of those people that scoffs at common birds. And that limpkin was my Yaka River State Park. Uh, the black naughty and brown naughty, that was cool to get them both standing next to each other. And we both really think piping plovers are about the cutest things with feathers. Yep. And the vermilion flycatcher was very friendly to us. That thick build vireo, I only got two photos and one of them came out in focus. Yep. So that was nice. Okay, end of the year stats. All right, so we ended with Natasha had 386 species. Townsend Warbler, I hate And you. <laughs> I got 388 species. Our discrepancy comes from the Townsend's Warbler. And also I saw some uh, Bandrum Storm Petrels while we were birding from the beach. 
that I didn't, they just flew by so quickly. I didn't get Natasha on the scope fast enough for her to get to see them. And so that's why we have a, a two species difference. Um, on eBird, it was 393, 395. Um, this, I, you know, to us, this is one of our crowning achievements. We got 373 slash 374 species with some sort of documentation, either photo or audio, yeah. so that we had proof of what we had seen. Um, that was uh, something we set out to do pretty much as soon as we started, decided to do a big year. We decided we wanted to get as much evidence of everything as possible so that it would be irrefutable and you know high integrity and very transparent. And we did have some species that uh, we had a bit of back and forth with and we ended up, we decided to drop them because you know, like he mentioned, integrity was a big thing. And although we know that what we saw, our proof wasn't, I guess, sufficient enough. So when like either the viewer will say, well, we don't really think blah, 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 whatever, we just dropped it. So um, we could definitely have a higher species count, but for integrity purposes, purposes we, we dropped some species that were in question. Yep, grainy photos don't. Grainy don't photos. <laughs> um, so the 18 species we only had audio documentation for. Um, there were 10 birds that were ABA code three, four, or five. Uh, those are rarity ratings for those who don't know. With five being the rarest that's mm -hmm. shown up in the U.S. less than eight times. Yep. Um, and we had eight species that we only saw in people's yards. Thank you. Yep, including one in our own. Yep. Um, and that is, uh, you know, that's a testament to that big years are really a community-wide effort. Yep. You can't do them alone on your own knowledge. Um, you certainly can't find all the birds without everybody's help, you know, reporting to eBird or telling us or whatever. It was just... Shout out to John. <laughs> John got us on lots of birds. I'm sure most of you know John Groscott. <laughs> Um, and we had seven species that were heard only that we never actually got to see the bird, but we heard them. And uh, I think all of those we have documentation for it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to see our list, uh, all 388 species and links to uh, either the photos or the audio, uh, you can go to tinyurl.com slash flbigyear2020. Mm -hmm. And you can see everything that we saw. Yep. And with that, we are happy to take questions, comments, and whatever else. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. That's amazing. I'm, I'm jealous, but it certainly sounds like I got more sleep than you all did. You sure did. You sure did yeah. <laughs> So um, you want to you want to start with did you, you Karen you had a question you want to ask your question first? Uh, sure, I was asking about your camping setup. So how how did um what did you did you, you said car camping? So how tell vehicle. us what you camped vehicle. in vehicle? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have a, well we have a tent. So sometimes we slept in a tent, um, but when we slept in a car um, in a Subaru. Um, and a, a Subaru Impreza hatchback, we basically take the, took the back seats down and we had a foam pad and we laid that out in the back um, and basically made it into a bed. <laughs> so, we quickly learned that mostly only works well at beaches because yeah. otherwise the mosquitoes are going to haunt you. Yep. Uh, we still have some, some bloody mosquito stains on the top of the yeah. car. <laughs> All right, thanks. So somebody wanted to um, ask if you saw the roseate spoonbill. I'm sure you yes. did, but oh, yep. yeah. yes, we yeah, did, yeah. yeah. Yep, that's always a favorite. That's one of those birds, I don't care how many times I see it or where I see it, it's cool always. every time. Yep. And somebody wanted to know where you saw the mountain bluebird. Wasn't that in Pasco County? Yes, yeah, yeah it yeah. was some rural road uh, next to some pastures in Pasco County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trilby, Trilby Drive or Trilby Road. Yes, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, I didn't remember that. Yeah, Trilby, yep. Yeah. Beautiful bird. Where yeah. is Bald? Um, somebody asked, where is Bald Point State Park? Oh, yeah. That's, that's, up uh, here by, that's up here by us in Franklin County. Yep, it's about an hour southwest of Tallahassee or 45 minutes west of St. Mark's. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely a spot we're stopping for. Great for shorebirds. Yeah, it's and great. During migration, great for all sorts of uh, passerines that are coming through. Yep. Especially if you can hit one of those magical fallout days. Where yeah. The, the bad weather times itself perfectly with morning migration. Yep. So Suzanne Roberts wants to know how many miles did you put on your car? About 60,000. It's very impressive that you never <laughs> really slept in a hotel. I, I'm, that's amazing. Nope, not once. <laughs> I mean, I uh, think that even without, even without COVID, we probably would have done the same thing. Yeah, we would have stayed in more friends' houses. Maybe, yeah, but we wouldn't have. We're, we're biologists, so we're, we, yeah, we don't so have the money to, yeah. to pay for <laughs> <laughs> paper, so, um, yeah. housing. When did you decide to really do a big year? And what at what date or like when, when you just started birding a lot, as I understand, at the beginning of the yeah. year? And then yeah, when did was, you go, wow, let's just go for it? Uh, Natasha said, let's go for it around uh, uh, mid-June, uh, mid-January. Um, so, because I need more things to do. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, yeah somewhere around like the 10th to 14th, I would say, somewhere yeah. in that second week of January. And, and did you agree, Gundy, at that point? Uh, sort of. Reluctantly. I was reluctant. <laughs> I actually had already been planning to do a big year this year in 2021. Um, I had been watching weather cycles and was hoping to this year would be an El Nino year. And that was kind of my plan. And I had been preparing for it for several years, doing lots of other bird chasing around. And she said, let's do it this year. And I was like, I didn't do any of my research. You know, I didn't, I didn't plan since October. I had to chase on January 1st. He's uh, a I'm like, let's just do it. Come on. So, <laughs> for, for, for lack of preparation right from the start, I, I was reluctant, but uh, yeah. it, it certainly turned out to be the right year to do it because we, we wouldn't have seen, we probably would have been 20 birds short this year. Yeah. Somebody wanted to know how can they, uh, I'm not sure, uh, they, they want to see the recording. Oh, they missed the beginning. I guess we, we, we'll make this a YouTube. We make all of our presentations YouTube so somebody can go back and watch the beginning of your, your very busy, busy, intense, <laughs> intense big year of presentation. And somebody's asking, um, Yoli Moritz is asking, how did you plan your trips? eBird. <laughs> yeah, eBird was yeah. a big thing. I mean, we basically would watch, we uh, subscribe to the rare bird, uh, rare bird alerts on eBird and get the hourly report. And so basically like all week while we're working and stuff, you know, in between time, we'd be seeing like birds being consistently reported in certain areas. And that's how we would end up planning for the weekend. Yep. So we, <laughs> I know this state really well because you yeah. know, I grew up here. And so Basically, in my mind throughout the week, I'm just planning, okay, we can hop off 75 for that one, we can hop off 75 for this one, and we we'll just plan loops around the state every weekend yeah. to try and pick up as many species as possible. Yeah. And we, you know, all of those birds, we pretty much found out through eBird or the Facebook group of yeah. Florida Bird Birding Birdies. Yep. Can you speak about your ranking, please, in terms of what, I guess there, there's a, um, eBird ranks the top 100 Florida birders of all time. Are are you one of them? Gundy? Oh, yeah. Well, we both are now. Yeah, I think. yeah we You're both, both are. are great. Um, so that was a goal that you know I just arbitrarily set for myself a few years ago. That um, so eBird has a thing that you can find from their Explore tab called Top 100, mm -hmm. and they'll break it down by country, state, county, and all time or by year. And so for all time, like it's your entire life list. And so I just decided, you know, oh, I want to be in the top 100 on eBird for my life list in Florida. And uh, that got accomplished with, I think, Upland Sandpiper um, in, uh, that was not too far from you guys, I think. I yeah. think that was some, the celery fields, wherever that is, that, that famous celery fields place that seems yeah, to get we, up and yeah. right here. We have them here sometimes, yes, in Celery yeah. Field. So yes, yeah, yeah, that's where we got it. And and um, did you both get the into the one hundred top one hundred during your great year, your big year? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow! Congratulations. Um, uh, Harma Nyhoff wants to compliment you on a great presentation, and I think we all really want to thank you very much. Uh, are there any other questions before we? 
Thank you so much. It, it's just been really great. And <laughs> I, I, I must say, I'm, I'm inspired to do a big year, but I, I think I'll stay in a few hotels. So thank you very <laughs> much. <laughs> if you can stay in a hotel, yeah. stay in a hotel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stay in <them. laughs> uh, so we should have had a GoFundMe for hotels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Find so us a place you. to stay. <laughs> thank you again. Okay. Now. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you so much. It was really a wonderful program. Um, I think somebody asked a question. I don't, I don't know if you saw this, Margie. Would you ever do a big year again? Did you ask that question? Oh yeah, good question. I would, I would do it again. He's like, no, oh. <laughs> I would not. <laughs> I oh, so there you go, doing... Margie. You can do it with Natasha. Yeah, yeah Natasha. I, we'll have to talk about it, <laughs> and, and we'll get a hotel. We'll get a hotel fund going. We'll get, hotels. Yeah. We'll get like really fancy hotels, and we'll send him pictures along the way. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. You take care and rest <laughs> up. Bye. Yeah. Okay. So, um. I just want to let you all know that uh, our plans for January 10th speaker, uh, unfortunately, uh, Jessie Berry had a sudden unexpected snag in her schedule. And uh, I'm, we're now going to have another dynamic speaker in her stead. So please stay, stay tuned as to who this speaker will be. And I also really want to encourage you all to um, Notice and, and look at Scott Widensall, who will be our February speaker. And perhaps you should start reading his best selling, A World on the Wing The Global Odyssey of Migratory Birds. That might be a good Christmas present if you're wondering who, who uh, what to tell somebody to give you as a present. It, it's, <laughs> it's a very, very good book and very inspiring, as are all his books. Um, he is an ornithologist and a very active international field researcher, and we're really thrilled that he'll be our very special guest for February, uh, February 14th, actually on Valentine's Day, and it will be a live meeting at the church. And if you can't attend in person, you'll be able to attend on Zoom. And uh, he'll also be doing um, some possible uh, events uh, the next day. So. Please stay tuned for that and, um, and uh, do start reading his book. Again, his uh, bestseller, A World on the Wing, The Global Odyssey of Migratory Birds. So we've got a lot to look forward to and I'm gonna make sure you have a really fun speaker for January as well. So please have a lovely Christmas holiday and uh, a happy new year. And I will be seeing you in the new year. Can't believe it's already there almost. Uh, thank you, Margie. That's really, um, you really put together a good uh, set of programs this year. Thank and you. And we're looking for um, some even better ones or, or as, as good as for next year. So um, happy holidays to everybody. Stay safe and have a great new year. And we'll see you at, uh, we'll see you all at the February meeting, but we'll Zoom with you at the January meeting. So stay safe, stay healthy and have a good holiday season. Yes. Bye. Bye.